So Juju, let, let's, let's start with you um, and start with this idea of why we're here in the first place. The idea behind this foundation um, and what it means to you to look out and see all these faces here tonight. Man, I mean, first thing I want to say, like, wow, this is an amazing turnout. I think every year it just keeps getting better and better. And, uh, you know, I would like to thank God above. You know, without him, none of this is possible. Um, you know, it, it's crazy to say that so many beautiful uh, uh, faces out here today. And I, I love it. You know, I was telling a uh, table earlier that, like, you know, when you come to my family, we're, we're welcoming, you know, we don't shake hands, we, we, we rarely shake hands. You know, we love to hug, if anything. And I think today, like, it's all about, you know, giving back. Um, I come from, uh, honestly, nothing. Uh, I lived in a garage uh, growing up as a kid, and I'm proud to say that because of where I've come. And without my family, none of this is possible today. And without you guys, none of this is possible. It's not about me, it's not about none of us up here. It's about the next generation, the kids and what, what, what comes from them because it starts with them and it started with me. And now, you know, I'm able to be in a, in a position to have, you know, the spotlight and the role model to give back. And I do it a hundred folds and I'll keep doing it until I am on this earth. So it's a blessing to have all you guys out here and we're gonna have a great time, you know? You know, so have a great time. I, by the way, I didn't notice this until you started talking. That ring is like the size of most people's heads. I'm blinded sitting here by that. How amazing. Okay, now he's opening it up. There we go. <laughs> Actually, we're like a necklace, too. So oh, okay. <laughs> That's some bling. Uh, congratulations on that. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on. But, but Anthony, let's go for you because, you know, this idea of serving the community is nothing new to you. You started your own foundation 23 years ago and have been mentoring guys like Juju, showing them the way. Can you talk? a little bit about what you've learned from your foundation and the importance of things like this. Sure, Alex. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, an honor to be here. And I was talking to Alex earlier and he said, on the when he's doing his broadcast and stuff, he doesn't hold back. He's a Trojan and he lets people know he's a Trojan. So the thing I loved about this gathering at the beginning, I mean, I love all the people, I love what's going on, but the prayer beforehand. I'm not, I'm not going to be apologetic, but as Juju mentioned, Jesus is the reason, and that's really what it's all about to me, is being obedient and really taking the gifts that he's given us, and he's given Juju some amazing gifts, and, you know, being able to give back. And when I first started my foundation, I'm thinking, well, you know, the phrase pay it forward is something that's said so much, but as I started down that journey, and you know, I'm sitting up here with these young guys. I mean, you know, my, my kids are a lot older than these two. And, uh, and I got grandkids that are almost as old as these guys. But um, it went from paying it forward to really honoring those that poured into my life. You know, Juju talks about his upbringing. My mom raised five by herself, working two, three jobs. Never knew my dad. He was in and out of prison. You know, he's gone away, passed away. So it's a matter of honoring those that poured into our lives and really respecting the name that we wear on the back of our jersey yes. and giving honor to those, my mom, the relatives, those organizations that stepped in when I was growing up in, in Ontario, California. And that's what I want to do. I want to be able to have that same impact. And I see that with Juju. I was at the first dinner when you kicked it off. And I tell people, people always ask me about different athletes. What are they really like? And, I, and I, I'm not going to say that because his family's here or he's here. I said. The guy's the real deal. He gets it. He knows what it means to give back and really allow those that are very talented to have opportunities of dreams and goals that they have. Uh, and that's what motivates me. You know, if it's all about a young man or a young woman that, you know, they just need a little bit of money to go to college, being first gen going to college. I've worked with kids that were first gen going, or graduating from high school. And all of a sudden you see them graduate with the 4.0 pre-med, going to medical school, now they're you know doing the residency and they're going to go back to the community to have an impact. That's what it's all about, is giving young people an opportunity, and that's what I see Juju and his foundation and your family, because family is amazing, and uh, I'm just thankful to be here. Yeah, that's good. The Hall of Fame motivational speaker as well. Uh, Marquise, uh, to you, 
I, I know uh, community involvement is so important to you. It's tough to follow Anthony Munoz, but uh, but but how have you been touched over the years working with kids and using your name for your own foundation as well? Excuse me, I'm very nervous. <laughs> yes, you good. Man. It's been a very long time since I've talked in front of a lot of people like this. Yes, sir. Uh, bear with me, but. Um, as you guys know, my life is a little bit different. I've been in foster care all my life. Hey, Mark, he's made move the mic a little closer. Uh, I've been in foster care all my life. Um, my mom is fully deaf, so my language growing up is sign language. You know what I'm saying? So it's a little bit different, but that's why I respect this guy so much. Um, I was in foster care all my life, but it's no different than anybody else. You know what I'm saying? As far as the work to get to where you need to get is very important. Um, and that's what I strived on. Um, and me growing up, I never had the opportunity or anybody come to my life to show me the path or show me the way. You find know saying as far as these old athletes and things like that from the hood to come back and show us what it's supposed to be like. You know what I'm saying? And I don't talk to Juju as much and sit down and really talk to him, but I look up to his family. I look up to you guys, you know what I'm saying? I know you guys don't talk to me as much, but just know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's important for me. For me being in foster care, I never had the example of how to be a father. You know what I'm saying? How to be the right man for my fiance and things like that. You know what I'm saying? So by me sitting back and seeing and watching and watching the other families growing up, you know what I'm saying? It's just put me in a position to where I know what type of father I am now to my girls and things like that. You from know what, what type of man I am to my fiance and things like that, but what type of person I am to these kids. You from know what I'm saying? My biggest thing is just giving hope. You know what I'm saying? The biggest thing about life is just energy and what you bring to the table. You from know what I'm saying? Your mind is as strong as you can think. It's not the body. You from know what I'm saying? Like whatever you can put your mind to, you can do it. And that's why I respect Juju so much. You know what I'm saying? Since day one, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not the social media type or everything that you're going to see. I probably never post. But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? I watched him since day one post and continue to put himself out there and just strive for the best. And I never knew why. I'm not going to lie to you. The first first year, I'm like, like why? You know what I'm saying? Like, why is he going so crazy? He's wild. You know what I'm saying? But then I sat back and understood, like, how many hearts, how many kids out here that he's actually grasping onto. One thing I'm going to let y'all know. Me being in foster care and things like that, the one thing that me being in foster care and things that we look forward to is hope. Amen. That one person that reach out and let us know, like they got faith in us to do what we, what they believe us to do. You feel what I'm saying? Like for football, I had a lot of people in my life that gave me hope. You feel what I'm saying? And one thing I want to let you know, like you, bro. You know what I'm saying I got the Team Lee Foundation, but I sit back and I learn a lot. You're younger than me, but at the end of the day, I learn a lot, bro. I build my foundation, I continue to help people, not strongly just off the type of person I am, but what I see that you do. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I know I don't talk to you much, but it's much respect, and it's always gonna be respect to everybody out here who's doing what they're supposed to do. Just know we paying attention and you continue to do it, because there's a lot of people out there who don't say nothing, but who's still constantly watching and seeing what type of people and how y'all moving in order to figure out how they can move. You from know saying so respect to everybody being out there and mad love. Wow. Yeah. He was saying how nervous he was, and then all of a sudden he's he's, he's Oprah. I mean, it was like incredible. So, Marquis, a, a follow up to what you said because foster care is something we do a lot of reporting on in Fox 11. I don't think enough people talk about it. Uh, the most vulnerable kids in our society, 50% of people in foster care end up either in prison or homeless within two years of aging out of the system. You're one of the exceptions. What do you think was the key to your success? What do you think people can learn from your story? Uh, never giving up. I think the biggest thing about people who come to that situation as far as foster care, you're going to always run into the, the bumps and the roads where it's going to always be struggle. It's never going to be easy. It's that 1%. And that one person, you already know the one person is very hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you're going to run to the struggle. So it's the people who got that strong mindset and strong faith to get over that hump. And once you get over that hump, you're going to see the light. You know what I'm saying? For me, I think the biggest thing was just never living in faith. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, I knew God had me. Regardless of 
me standing in the motel, hotel, we didn't matter, you know what I'm saying? God got me, and that's, that's why I came here today. That's why we're here today, you know what I'm saying? It's a blessing. We all got the opportunity to touch somebody and make somebody's future better. Well, and, and, and thanks to a lot of your donations with the foundation, Juju was able to do that in a big way the last two days. He's been working basically nonstop. Woo! Was out at Long Beach Poly uh, yesterday, donated a weight room with Austin Eckler, did a camp uh, for the kids there, out today uh, playing video games. He said, uh, losing to a 10-year-old kid. Um, <laughs> Talk us, uh, to us about what the last couple days have, have meant to you and, and some of what you've learned from those kids. Uh, it's meant everything, man. Uh, it's you know, like, kind of like what they were saying, man. You give these kids uh, two things, opportunity and hope. Yes. Man, you give anybody that, it's, they can go a long way, you know? Uh, so, yeah, these past couple of days, uh, went to Long Beach Poly, donated a weight room with uh, Austin Eckler, Jarrell Casey and his foundation. Uh, which is amazing, beautiful. Uh, 80 kids, we, I, when I was in there, it was four benches, 80 kids. You had to wait an hour to say, <laughs> just to use the weights. But like that's what it's all about. You know, We're giving these kids hope and giving them the opportunity to you know, want to go in there and work out, want to get better. Uh, we, also had a, we also did a free camp for the kids. 250 kids show up and it was amazing. I had so much fun, so much energy. And, it, and for me, I was something I, was, I said this earlier. Like, it's it's not about the money. It's not about the nope. the nice, fancy, all that other stuff. Like, it's about giving these kids joy, the opportunity for a lifetime that they can that will stick with them forever. And it's so funny because I can see these kids grow. But it's also great too because you know you know Long Beach probably used to recruit the little eighth graders that are actually good you know, <laughs> come, come to our school to get better. And then. Um, Moving on to that, this morning we had a we had a uh, a gaming camp, which is a also oh my gosh, I love video games so much. Like after this, I'm gonna go play two hours of video game. Now I'm gonna do six hours of video game. Which game? Uh, right now I'm playing a lot of Call of Duty, Fortnite, FIFA, a little bit of Madden. You know, I play Roblox with my siblings, which is nice. Um, but we did a camp, and it, what I love about gaming and how I incorporate that with you know my life and football too is that gaming is my passion, right? You know, I love gaming. I think a lot of kids can relate to gaming. A lot of kids can relate to, you know, that passion of working together. You know, we talked about, you know, the hand-eye coordination, the, the communication between teammates. And, you know, you take that onto the football field, and you t or you just take that into your daily life, right? Not just, not just sports, but your daily life. And it, it, it's an impact, and it helps you create great habits. And I love that I, I'm able to do what I can do is because when I was a kid, I was, I couldn't afford to go to football camps, but what I did it was I sat on that sideline and I watched those kids go to those camps. And I was like, you know, one day, I'm gonna run a camp, I wanna make sure that camp is free so no kid has to pay. Because I remember what it feels like to pay and not be able to participate. So, um, honestly, it, it's been a great thing. And, and just to end it off this weekend, you know, I go back to Boston tomorrow but just to end it off, you know, to have a luau and to have this, and I was telling the, t the table today, it's like, you know, we're here, it's, it's a great cause, but I also want to show you guys my culture. Like, this is this is where I grew up, you know, like the food, the atmosphere. You know, we're not in Hawaii, but this is the closest we can get <laughs> to like the West Coast right. of Hawaii. Yeah. If you guys want to go to Hawaii, just start swimming that way. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's, it's an amazing cause. Like, I appreciate everyone, you know, just coming out and uh, doing this. All right, we gotta talk a little football, since this is the Trojan Legends Luau, and we've got some Trojan Legends oh, here. Baby. I wanna ask each of you for your favorite memory as a USC Trojan on the football field. And wow. since you're our senior statesman of Mr. Munoz, Hall of Famer, oh, here, let's one. start with you. Just one? No. Yes, favorite one. Wow, there's a lot of, okay, my favorite has to be, and a lot of people don't, no, but in my four years at USC, I played one healthy season. I had three knee operations in four years. My last knee operation came my senior year. Second time we had the football, first game. We just won a national championship the year before. We're ranked number one. First game, Texas, I go down with my third knee operation. I missed the entire season. And we as Trojans know there's a couple of teams that we all love playing, UCLA and Notre Dame. I'd missed them all when I was there until my senior year. I missed everything. So my most memorable time was I rehabilitated 
after my third knee operation my senior year, and I knew we were going to go back to the Rose Bowl. You know, when you have Marcus Allen at fullback, Charles White at tailback, you have Ronnie Lott, Dennis Smith, Joey Browner, and you got you got Keith Van Horn, Worth Foster, Bruce Matthews is a freshman. You know, it's like, we got to win. And I kept telling my teammates, you have to win because I want to play in the Rose Bowl with you. All these guys that I'd come into school with, I hadn't played in the Rose Bowl. So I was crazy. I rehabilitated. I had to talk John Robinson to let me play. But he let me practice and earn my starting job back. So Ohio State was number one. Bama was two. We were three. And I earned the job back. And I got to play in my one and only Rose Bowl my senior year. I played the entire game. Well, I should say I played the entire game but two plays. Early in the first quarter, I thought I was going to hyperventilate because I was so excited. So I ran out, <laughs> settled down, and I went back in. And I played the entire game as we beat the number one team on an 82-83 yard drive without passing the football once. Sorry, guys. We didn't pass the football once. Yeah. 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 We had four number one picks on the offensive yeah. line with the tight end who played 13 years in the NFL, Marcus. And we beat them 17-16. And that had to be like the most memorable because all the experts, all the pundits that are out there, said, I'm finished, there's no way I'm gonna play football. And after I played that one game, they said, nice way to finish your football career, find something else to do. And uh, I said, it only takes one team. And with the third pick in the draft, the Bengals drafted me. But uh, playing in that Rose Bowl my senior year was the best. And I ended up in the, in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. By the way, show everybody your hand. Oh, yeah. Your finger yeah. doesn't do that? <laughs> I have a thumb. Yeah. I'm a yeah. bunion thumb. Yeah, yeah. Mar Mar Marquise, what's your, your favorite memory as a USC Trojan player? I have a lot, but if I'm... Get closer to the mic. Specifically going for myself. Yeah. Yes. Be selfish. It's um, all about you. Yes. Um, Arizona. Oh, I remember that. Oh. I was at, I, what, what I was, happened? I was at home watching this game, and I was like, yo, this dude's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I got there... Honestly, I thought I was gonna have a year with him, and then he just left. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take his number nine. <laughs> it worked out well. Yeah. Oh my God. What happened in the Arizona game? Uh, oh. Arizona game, I pretty much blacked out. Um, I ended the game, I think, with like 17 catches for 345. Wow. It's crazy because one of my best three TDs. I had three touchdowns. I think one of my friends, uh, Silas Red, is actually in the sense. Um, I came in at halftime, and Silas looked at me and was like, bro, you going crazy. <laughs> so I'm like, what are you talking about? We lose this. So I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, bro, you got 250 in the first half. <laughs> so literally, the game started. The game started. Defense went out first. Um, I stayed in to get IV. Then I came out and finished out. We still lost. <laughs> so once I had the interview, I couldn't really celebrate. But that was uh, after doing that, um, I realized that game set me up for the future, which was the blending off and things like that. So. Yeah, congratulations. You can celebrate tonight. Yeah. For you. Uh, I would say mine's going to have to be uh, the Rose Bowl. Um, Rose Bowl. Yeah, yeah. So we play against Penn State. Uh, my boy, Lucina was there too. He, you know, my boy, yes, sir, holding it down. So uh, we played this Rose Bowl, and just like how you said, you know, every every scout out there, you know, say we were going to lose across the board. Everyone picked uh, Penn State over us, and, you know, I, we were down at halftime. We came on the top. I believe I gave a speech, but it wasn't the best, but, hey, it worked. <laughs> and, uh, yes, I would say the Rose Bowl for sure is my, my best memory. Very nice. My, mine, even though I didn't play, was yeah, as a fan, team. was uh, going to the Orange Bowl when Matt and Reggie and the team were there. I was a freshman. My dad and I went, we were sitting next to all these Oklahoma fans, and Oklahoma was a really good team at that point. They were so obnoxious and taunting us during the first quarter, and then they all left in the third quarter because we were beating them so bad. 55-19 national champion Heisman Trophy winning season. That was a good year to be a Trojan. This year, though, what do you guys think? It feels like USC is back. What do you what do you think about this year? I mean, dude, I don't know. This will be hard. Are you, are you gonna go to the basketball games or are you going to the football games now? I mean, you, you have two great teams, uh, but I think USC has a great team. I think uh, you know Lincoln, what he's doing over there is amazing, uh, and I'm very curious to see how we do in uh, what is it? Are we in the Big Ten now? No, or this year is the, the last year. Oh, the this, this is the last year. Yeah. Uh, but I'm very, I'm very obviously they're doing great uh, this past year and. 
They're gonna do great this year, so I'm super excited. Predictions for this year? Well, I'm excited, you know, being a former offensive player, I'm excited about the defensive guys they've been signing and who they're bringing in because, you know, I felt bad for Caleb and that offense and, you know, the offense to throw for 500 yards and lose for, you know, lose the game, it's like, that shouldn't be happening. But you know, I was at the big man luncheon yesterday and Frosty had, I think, seven defensive players up on the stage and every one of them was transferred in. Um, so I'm excited about the defense, watching them, even though, I mean, I, I think it's going to be an excellent year. And I'm excited about the Big Ten. I think it's going to help out. Uh, not only I think we'll do well, but I really believe it's going to help out our recruiting. Yes. Yeah, you're going to be on the big national platform. Our I'm just platform. looking for the Big Ten. Yeah. Pac-12, y'all already know what the deal is with SC and everybody else. I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> y'all already know what the deal is. So I'm just trying to get to the Big Ten. I just want to see where we stand at that point. Because yeah. clearly, as far as the Pac-12 stands, I'm not saying we're the best, but we're the best. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we're just trying to figure it out at that point. So uh, let's, uh, I don't want to go on forever, but just we see this ring here. Everybody's so proud of the fact that you won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Can, can you can you talk to us a little bit about that day? Can you take us through that day of the Super Bowl? Yeah, so uh, it was actually, you know, I woke up that morning, you know, really happy. Uh, my usual go-to breakfast on game day, steak, eggs, and rice. And great meal. Oh, my gosh. It was amazing, too. And leading up to the game, I was, I was very, like, calm. I got, when I, I got nervous when I put on my pads. Yeah. And walked out, walked out that tunnel and, you know, going onto the field and, dude, my heart was just racing. And then next you know, as soon as the whistle was blown and it was just like football, it was like any other football game. Yeah. I understand it may seem like it was like a big stage, which, which it was, you know, the, it's the biggest stage, you know, I dreamed of playing there and, and doing that. But when the whistle was, when the whistle was blown, it was just felt like you were playing football like, 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 it, like you were a kid, basically. Um, I can't explain that moment because that moment you would have to like be in the moment. You have to relive it. It's really hard to explain it. I, I'm working to get back there with my new team, and uh, like this is something very, very special to me. My mom knows because like I grew up watching Super Bowls all the time, and the fact that I actually won this, like I didn't win it, you know, not for myself, but like you said, it's relatives, the people who were there to give you that hope, the opportunity that supported you. And that's why I went into the stands, man. I went into the stands, you know, like, I think I got like, I got like close to 100 tickets in the Super Bowl game. More than that, son. How much did that cost? <laughs> Don't talk about it. <laughs> Don't talk about it. It's, this is, <laughs> I just say it was over uh, six figures. I mean, over six figures. I said don't talk about it. <laughs> but, like I said, like, in, in that moment, in that moment, it's it's not about the cost. It's not about the money. It's not. It's about the memories that will last forever, and like that memory will go the longest way. And I'm gonna remember that day. So, uh, and and quickly, what can we expect this year, the Patriots? Oh, this year with the Patriots, man, you expect a lot of great things, man. Uh, you know, I, I've been fortunate to be coached by three, you know, go Giants: Mike Tomlin, uh, Andy Reid, and Bill Belichick. And I would say Bill Bill is the real deal. He's uh he he you don't really know him unless you're in his circle and when you are in his circle, uh, he's a great dude. And uh O'Brien Is he funny? Uh, what's he what's he like? Yeah. Does he relax? <laughs> yeah, Does he he's smoke funny. a blunt? What, what, no, no, what's, no, no, his, no. what's his vibe? <laughs> no, he likes to crack jokes. He cracks a lot of jokes. Um uh, but he, he's just a great dude overall. It, it's hard to explain his personality, but our team is really great. I'm super excited to what we have and what we're building. Uh, starting our foundation and where we're, where we're headed to, uh, we have so many great things ahead of us. So, uh, in, in the auction, you'll see, man. You guys get to go to a Charger game and get spend time with my mom and me, uh, have a great time. So, yeah. So one last pitch for the auction before we go to each of you. We'll start with you, Marquise. A pitch because these guys are now going to be asked to to spend some money to support the kids, the to help money. everybody out, to help Juju do more good. So, what's your final pitch to everybody about why it's important to give? Everybody, and most of everybody in here got kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, just think about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just the opportunity in which you're giving your young one or somebody else young one. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody here who's a parent, give your kids hope. 
You feel what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all give them hope every day. Wake them up every day. You can do this. You can do this. You feel what I'm saying? Like the little donations you might see, it's, it's nothing. Because the amount in which you give, what you're going to receive on the back end of what that kid or person is going to do with what you give is more than anything. You know what I'm saying? And regardless of what it is, you feel what I'm saying? Like, it's whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling y'all, like, I stayed in a hotel, motel. So my thing is 20 bucks, 50 bucks. Hey, Juju, I can't do the auction, but hey, I got some things on the side, like, whatever. You just think about what you actually doing for a kid. It's not for no grown up, nobody who's already got something established. It's for the kids. You feel what I'm saying? Like, what's important at this day? I got two girls, not gonna lie to y'all. One that's three and one that's one. And when I got them girls, it made me realize what's important. It's not about Marquise and what Marquise got going. You know what I'm saying? It's about them and what I can do for their kids' kids. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's set, a, yes. set the foundation now. Let's get it right, man. Everybody do what you can, and let's get this going. Anthony Munoz, last pitch. Marquise said it all. I don't have to say a whole lot. And dude, you said it earlier. It's not about him. It's not about... It's about the kids. And one of the things we talk about with the 100,000 kids we've worked with is the kids don't care what you know until they know that you care. And with this foundation and your help, all these kids will know that they care. And final word to the man of the hour of the Juju Smith-Schuster Foundation, Juju Smith-Schuster. Uh, I mean, you guys all said it best, man. I'm not going to say a whole lot, but uh, dude, it's... The reason why I'm up here, honestly, because someone took a chance on me, and I'm just paying it. I'm just paying it forward, you know. Like, and you don't know who that kid may be, or who you don't know who to, who, who might be that that next kid that's going to pay it forward. But you don't know unless you try, right? So today, tonight, I'm not asking for a whole lot. You give me a penny, I'll make sure it go a long way, a hundred percent. You guys don't give me nothing. That's totally fine. That's totally fine because I know that. My team and my foundation, we're going to pay it forward. I'm just happy that you guys are here, honestly. I'm so happy that we're here for a great cause. I'm happy we're here for the kids. Like I said, it's not, it's not about me. It's not about nobody up here. It's about the future of our kids and what's ahead of us. Thank you, guys. Juju Smith-Schuster, Anthony Munoz, Marquise Lee. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen. Now we want to bring to the stage. Yeah, stand up. I love that. Stand up. They deserve it for that message. They are fantastic. Excellent. I want to bring to the stage now a friend of the foundation.